You're listening to MMA Odds Breaker. I'm Frank Trigg. This week we have Jason Brills, who's fighting Rafael Davis on May 16th coming up. Um, Jason's 21 and 5, uh, comes out in Omaha, Nebraska. Where are you training? Are you still in Omaha or did you move? No, I'm still in Omaha. Uh, training out of combat, the Premier Combat Center. Okay, and who are your training partners right now? Uh, right now, I got uh, Ryan Jensen, Houston Alexander, uh, Joe Allenberger, uh, D- Dakota Cochran. Um, you know, those are just some of my training partners and my coaches. Uh, Scott Morton, Kurt Pedoni, and then uh, Ryan. Well, of course, everyone knows that uh, Houston, Houston Alexander used to have a, had a run in the UFC. Joe Ellenberger actually is the is uh, the brother to Jake Ellenberger, and he's making his debut here pretty quick in the UFC. So you've got a good stablemate of training partners, but is anybody as tall as Raphael and able to wrestle like Raphael that's in the room that's able to give you that same kind of look you're going to get when you fight Davis? Yeah, um, you know Ryan Jensen. You know he's six one. I got a couple of training partners that are six three. Um, Ed Wagner. He's been he's he's up there. He's he's six five. Um, you know I've been I've been fighting tall. Tall people, my whole career. I'm I'm pretty short for a, a light heavyweight. So. What's well, when you first got on my radar when you lost a split decision to uh, uh, Antonio Nogueira uh, back at UFC 114. That's when, how I first started paying attention to you and kind of seeing what, where you were at. And then your very next fight, you fought uh, my old training partner and, and, uh, and business partner Vladimir Mashenko at uh, UFC 129. And I started kind of paying attention to your style and kind of seeing that you're you're. Do you, do you think that you're kind of short for the weight class? Right now, and they, it seems like a lot of guys are coming in that are, are really, really super tall at your weight class. Oh yeah, uh, I've I've always been you know short and and definitely I don't you know I don't cut a ton of weight like most of those guys you know I walk around at maybe two twenty um, you know so my weight cut very minimal but uh, but I wrestled you know for quite a few years. You know, I wrestled for the University of Nebraska in Omaha for five years, and then I coached there for 12 years. Oh, geez. And so my weight cutting, you know, so Weight cutting days are done. For not you. a big fan. <laughs> well, the, yeah. the, the other thing, too, is that, that I, didn't, I knew that you wrestled uh, out there, but I didn't realize you stayed on coach for so long afterwards. I, I, wasn't, I didn't know that about you. And does that help or hurt you with your training? It seems like a lot of guys that spent some time coaching in college, trying to take a step back and be coached makes it very difficult. No, um, in fact, you know, my role as a wrestling coach was more of a, a wrestling workout partner. Uh, so and it actually helped my wrestling and helped my fighting because I was, I was constantly working out. You know, I'd go and train during the day fighting, and then, I'd, you know, I'd always have a, a three, 3 o'clock wrestling practice. And, you know, some of my training partners, you know, Les Sig, you know, he, was a, he was a four-time Division two national champ, uh, uh, he made it to the world teams in freestyle, you know. Um, I had another national champ. We had a couple national, about three national champs at heavyweight. That you know, that, that those are my workout partners every day. So, and then you know, we had a stable of coaches up at you know, We always had yeah. anywhere from eight to ten assistant coaches, more or less. So I was always learning from these guys. So. Uh, do you still use a lot of those guys, you know, to, to come in occasionally to just to keep your wrestling solid? Because it seems like a lot of wrestlers in MMA are, are falling away from the wrestling gene. And uh, Johnny Hendricks against the GSP kind of brought it back and said, look, I got to spend a lot of time wrestling. And then we saw that fight. And, of course, you know, it's a split decision. But, you know, I think that Johnny won. Other people think the GSP won. But, you know, whatever. But it's like guys now are starting to go back to the wrestling route that are wrestlers in general just to try to keep things tight in that game because you need it so much, so much in MMA. Are you doing the same kind of thing? Yeah, you know, and I've, I've never wavered too far from wrestling. I mean, that was my, that's been my bread and butter since day one. And, you know, if, it, if it's not broke, why fix it type of mentality? You know, and you, you're a wrestler, you know, yeah. the mentality of just getting in there and just, I mean, some days you're, you know, some days you're just getting beat on. And, I mean, you still have to, you, you have to make it through that practice, you know. So that, that mentality... You don't get that in in boxing or in Muay Thai or Jiu Jitsu. I don't think. You know, at least I haven't seen it. You know, I actually talked to Michael Chandler um, a couple of days ago, and he said the exact same thing. The reason why that 
that he chose to go down to Alliance Training Center in San Diego is because there's a bunch of wrestlers in the room, and that kind of mentality is always in there. Is that the same reason why you kind of stay up where you're at now in, in uh, Omaha, because there's so many other wrestlers that are in the room that's so easy for you to stick with that, your bread and butter? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's real. It's, in fact, I mean, they bring me down to reality if, if I do step away from it at all. Um, I mean, some of my, we had a, an old coach, Zach Staller, who was, you know, he was a, back in high school, you know, he was a, a Greco national champ, um, but he was a three time All American, just this unbelievable wrestler. You know, he, he's, you know, one of my workout partners. He's my corner guy. Uh, Zach Dominguez, who was named, you know, USA Wrestling Coach of the Year, he's here in Omaha. I mean, he comes up and he runs our, our Wednesday wrestling practices, you know, and it's, uh, you know, and then just the workout partners that we have in wrestling. It's, most of them are, are from a wrestling background. So when we have a wrestling day, it's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, competitiveness, I guess you could say. Well, Jason, thanks for coming on here with MMA Odds Break and spending some time. This, of course, is with Titan Fighting Championships on May 16th and can be seen on Axis TV if you have that network. Um, this is going to be a good fight for me to watch because two old-school wrestlers, two guys that come from the, the true root of wrestling, trying to be MMA guys and to see where they both stand and, and, and how much of the game have you picked up and how much have you learned and, and where, you can, where you can push the game. And like you said, neither one of you are going to crack. Neither one of you are going to mentally break. So this is going to be a, a big, legit fight and a, a, a tough fight. Can't wait to see it. You guys are fighting in Newkirk, Oklahoma. So it's going to be uh, very interesting to see how the crowd reacts because it is Oklahoma and uh, two of the best uh, Division One programs, at least, and one of the best Division Two programs is right there in the, by Newkirk. So it could be interesting to see how many fans show up to watch uh, two old school wrestlers battle it out. Oh yeah, there'll, there'll be a lot of guys. And then, uh, and Frank, I think it's on CBS Sports Network. Oh, I'm, you're right. I'm, not sure. I'm sorry. I apologize. I did say Access TV. It is on CBS Sports Network. I apologize. That's correct. Joe Kelly, um, one of the uh, one of the owners, actually uh, um, told me about it when he, the first episode, the first show, and I forgot. I apologize about that. Look. All right, well, thanks, Chase. I appreciate it, bud. Have a good rest of the day, and thanks for talking to us right after your workout. Hey, no problem. I appreciate it, Frank. Have a good one. You too.